Berserk, in a way, is a story about betrayal. From the very first chapter of the series, betrayal has been a major theme. The mayor of Coca betrayed his citizens by serving them up to the Snake Baron, who in turn betrayed the mayor for thinking that tributes of flesh were giving him any real satisfaction. Teresia's mom betrayed her dad, who then betrayed his own human nature by turning into an apostle and then becoming a gluttonous demon slug. Guts was betrayed by his father figure at the age of nine when Gambino sold him out to Donovan and you get the idea. The biggest betrayal and Berserk took place when Griffith sacrificed his comrades to confirm his ascension as Femto, the fifth angel of darkness. But now that he has become absolute in the world of Fantasia, some people tend to think that Griffith has become so powerful that he can rival the God Hand. There are theories online that claim Griffith might one day end up betraying the God Hand, but we think the opposite might be more accurate. Because from the moment they were introduced, it's clear that the members of the God Hand have been keeping something from their newest kinsmen, and it might very well be treachery. So let's take a look at exactly how and why the God Hand might end up betraying Griffith towards the conclusion of Berserk. He feels like the most important member of the God Hand from a narrative standpoint, but he isn't. Why Griffith feels like the Absolute. Ever since his reincarnation as the Angel of Longing, Femto, it's clear that Griffith has become a being whose power cannot be quantified in human terms anymore. His first offensive act, besides the one you're all thinking about, was compressing a bunch of apostles into a ball of flesh and blood using his newly acquired spatial manipulation powers. Though if we're being honest, that was a misfire, since he was aiming for the Skull Knight. Griffith misfires once again as he sees Skull Knight escape the eclipse with Guts and Casca in tow, but by the time he reappears during the Black Swordsman arc, it becomes clear that he has a better grasp over his own skills at this point. See, during the eclipse, Griffith had quite literally died and been reborn as an entirely new being. As such, his actions can be viewed with a certain lens of infancy, in that being a newborn demon king, Femto had no idea how to use or control his powers efficiently. The Black Swordsman arc takes place two years after that first display of his power, and that is more than enough time for someone to grow up, especially if they're demonic by nature. When Guts re-encounters Griffith within the interstice created by the slug we mentioned in our intro, he immediately tries to take his head off, but he fails to even get close to the guy. That's because Femto repels him using pure energy every single time without even lifting a finger, and he has such masterful control over himself that he can tank near point-blank cannon fire without flinching. It's also clear that Griffith now has a more keen understanding of the nature of demon kind and how causality functions, because he's the one who does all the heavy lifting when it comes down to convincing the slug count to give up his daughter and be reincarnated once again. Again. Femto is the one who points out that only by sacrificing Teresia will the Count be able to live on, and if the Count rejects this sacrifice, well, his soul's vibrations were harmonizing with the Abyss anyway, and then he summons the damn thing just to prove his point. Griffith realizes his status as the absolute being when he's incarnated into the physical world as the Falcon of Light. The Skull Knight explained to Guts that the incarnation ceremony was more than a shadow on the water, it traced a phenomenon in the divine domain, and so there was no way to stop it from the physical world world. Every thousand years, when a maelstrom of malice and death gathers at one particular location, a person from that divine domain is given a body of flesh and incarnated into the physical world as an absolute being. They retain all their godly powers from the divine domain, but are now as real as the stones that pave the streets of Griffith's childhood home. Surely, by being the subject of such a rare phenomenon, Griffith becomes the strongest God Hand member, right? Then there are all the miracles he performs following his incarnation, like being missed by close-range arrow volleys, flying over battle lines on his Pegasus-esque steed, literally charming people into his service, and communing with the souls of the dead to give them peace. Griffith has made himself out to be a prophesied savior whose capital city is the only safe haven for humanity, purely because he made it so. As Femto, his control over his divine abilities have refined to a point where he can manipulate a space-distorting sword slash from a Skull Knight's blade into a lethal strike that burns the forest of the spirit trees in the divine domain and triggers the advent of Fantasia. The last chapter of Berserk, chapter 372, closes with a tagline that says, all flows according to his will. And that tagline isn't wrong. Berserk has pretty much been the Griffith show since the Millennium Falcon arc began, and with the titular Falcon now taking his gaze off the west and looking to the east, it feels like things are going to stay that way. Griffith is going to create a second empire of man across the continent of humanity like he said he would in chapter 358, and we've already seen that there's nothing Nothing Guts can do to stop it. Even his fellow God Hand members might not be able to do anything about his actions now that his plans have progressed this far, because we haven't seen Slan, Ubik, Conrad,
Ararat or Void appear in the world, despite them having supposedly been incarnated during the Great Roar as well. It's possible that Griffith is going east to join up with them, as it would make sense that the God Hand would manifest in the east, as opposed to the west where beacons of goodness like Elfhelm exist, but that's a cookie cutter explanation if you ask us. Considering how he's keeping Casca prisoner in Falconia by basically messing with her mind, and also keeping in mind that Griffith has never had any qualms about using others to get what he wants, it's quite possible that he either has an understanding with his fellow kinsmen or has already neutralized them in order to prevent them from interfering with his prophesized Age of Darkness. Because while it is true that Griffith's current reign was ordained in scripture as a prophecy, it wasn't as the Falcon of Light, it was as the Falcon of Darkness. By every metric presented to us in Berserk, Griffith is supposed to be the strongest entity in existence, a divine being preordained by causality to rule the world and spoken of by the Holy See as a dark demon come to destroy everything. It wouldn't be a shock to see Griffith betray his god hand kinsmen if they got in the way of his business because, as the idea of evil tells him in chapter 83, Griffith's will is the will of evil itself, and by going against him, the god hand members would be going against their very god himself, which we don't think he would take kindly considering the idea of evil literally lives in hell. All of this to say that betraying Griffith has never ended well for anybody, and the god hand would not be an exception to that rule if it came down to things. But here's where everyone makes a mistake. They forget that Griffith is the new guy. The last member to join the God Hand before Griffith has at least 216 years worth of experience on him, whoever that may be, because that's how the Eclipse cycles work in Berserk. And besides, Miura already told us who the key is regarding the God Hand's plan, and it isn't Griffith as you might think. The key is Void, the God Hand's true mastermind, and why he might betray Griffith. Kentaro Miura would rarely comment on things that would give away too much about his grand plans for Berserk. He even went so far as to remove a full chapter from the official continuity for that reason, and generally avoided answering any questions trying to guess the future of Berserk. But he did give us one hint about who might be the most involved in it. When Miura was asked about the God Hand's ultimate purpose in the story, he said he couldn't talk about it too much, but that the key was Void. This sort of made sense given that Void seems to be the leader of this group of gothic hellraisers, but then we recalled that Miura had also called Berserk a thousand year long story and things just started to click for us left, right and center. See, the term Void is simply referring to the big brain god hand member we all know and love, but it also might be a reference to a concept in one of Japan's most influential schools of thought, the Godai philosophy. In this philosophy, five major elements are described as being the fundamentals of the world, but instead of simply being called by their elemental names like fire, wind or earth, Godai philosophy breaks things down to their atomic level. Fire is actually called energy in Godai philosophy, and earth, wind, and water are represented as the integral states of matter instead. Energy, solid, gas, liquid, that's four out of the five elements that create this philosophy. The fifth element is called space in its base understanding, but it is also given the elemental name of void, and this is where things start to get interesting. In Berserk, there exist representatives of the four basic elements in the four elemental kings, but there is no representative of the concept of void, unless you take into consideration that the character void can manipulate space and then things start falling into place bit by bit. In the last section, we mentioned that the incarnation ceremony is something that only happens once in a thousand years, according to the Skull Knight. While Griffiths is the latest to occur, if we are to assume that Void was the first member of the God Hand, which is pretty much confirmed by Chapter 362, then we must also assume that his incarnation ceremony is how Skull Knight knows so much about these demonic developments and why he's stuck in a skeletal armor in the first place. There are many clues throughout Berserk that hint that Void isn't exactly entirely upfront with his so-called kinsmen. Every time he appears in the story, he speaks only as much as he needs to. And this is going to sound ironic considering his eyelids are literally sewn shut, but his gaze gives away that he's almost always holding something back from everyone. In his very first appearance, while the other God Hand members were shocked and awed by Guts' inhuman ability to contend against his pain and attempt at attacking a God Hand member, Void remained silent. Instead, we only get a single panel showing his reaction which, given the state of his face, is hard to read, but we can only guess he was thinking that these fools know nothing about causality. That's because Slan was purring for Guts to join their ranks and Ubik kind of agreed with her, but Conrad shot the idea down by saying Guts wasn't ordained by the laws of causality. The manga then gives us the aforementioned panel with a silent void gazing into the abyss, and we proceed with the Slug Count's second reincarnation. 
or rather, his rejection of the same. The second time Void appears in the story is when Griffith triggers his own eclipse, and here, it is made abundantly clear that Void actually knows about the existence of the idea of evil, as he twice mentions the ungodly god born of man, which is exactly what the idea would describe itself as being if it ever officially appeared in Berserk. This pretty much confirms that Void knows things his kinsmen don't, because while every God Hand member might have met the idea before being reincarnated, they didn't quite give its purpose the kind of gravitas that Void does. Ubik and Conrad are adherents of the causal current, and sure, Slan wants to subvert it only to make Guts her literal plaything, but the authority with which Void declares that all lies within the current of causality is too definitive for it to have held the same kind of meaning that it does when his kinsmen bring up the topic. The God Hand, while partially clairvoyant, aren't all-seeing. They had predicted that Griffith would end up becoming their kinsman at the Fifth Eclipse, and that it would signal the start of the Age of Darkness but they didn't predict that Skull Knight would show up and rescue Guts and Casca from being sacrificed. The look that Void and Skull Knight shared upon the latter's breach of the interstice cements the idea that the thousand year story that is Berserk begins with their rivalry, but it's what happens after the Wandering Wraith's escape that is more relevant to this video. Ubik, Slan, and Conrad are amused by Skull Knight's rescue of Guts and Casca, as they had not foreseen it, and unpredictability was probably the only thing that could give pleasure to beings who were close to being practically omniscient. But the fact that they didn't predict this rescue was proof of them not being as all-powerful as they've been presented as being. Well, that is, except Void. Slan, Conrad, and Ubik resign themselves to the notion that while an unpredictable thing like Skull Knight rescuing Guts and Casca could happen at temporal junctions like the Eclipse, those things were ultimately pointless in Causality's grand scheme. As she says this, Slan glances at Void, who has the same look of you guys know nothing on his face as he did the first time we saw him. And as heretical as this might be for some of you, the 3D adaptations of Berserk practically confirm our suspicions that Void is hiding something from the God Hand. In the manga, Slan just glances at Void after commenting that the God Hand themselves weren't omniscient, but in the third Golden Age movie, she straight up asks Void whether Skull Knight's rescue was a part of Causality's plan or not, and the enigmatic God Hand member simply chooses not to answer her question. We haven't seen Void since Griffith's Eclipse, but we have certainly heard of him. In Chapter 138, Father Mosgus gives us what we believe to be Void's origin story, and we think that that tale, when combined with Miura's claims about Berserk's actual timeline and the fact that he called Void the key to the God Hand's plan, points to one thing, and one thing only. Griffith is about to be betrayed by the people he committed his soul to. Think about it. When Griffith went into the Abyss and conversed with the idea of evil, he was told to do as he wanted because his will was the idea's will itself, and by acting on his own desire, he'd be carrying out the will of God. But that conversation took place in Chapter 83, which has been removed from the continuity, and so we don't technically know what happened when he met God at the end of Chapter 82. Even in the deleted chapter, the idea tells Griffith that it was the thing that determined his entire life story millennia ago including the Eclipse, and most likely, everything that was to come in the future as well. So if the idea of evil is the one pulling Griffith's strings, and Void is the first and most established personification of its power, doesn't it make sense that the idea would carry out its ultimate plan through Void, and not Griffith? While it is true that Griffith seems to be on the verge of creating a demonic sacrificial ritual to beat all other sacrificial rituals by penning up all of humanity within Falconia, Who's to say that's even what his plan is in the first place? He just came up with a 10-year plan for integrating refugees into his new capital city and has made many proposals that will take years to be implemented, let alone realized. Griffith's primary aim seems to be ruling all of humanity after getting them under one roof. And that might not sit well with the idea of evil, which lives inside a swirling mass of tortured souls of the dead. Perhaps it is Griffith's human ambition to rule over the continent of man that puts his comrades against him. Or maybe it's the baby boy that fused into his vessel at the time of his incarnation, because it's clear that the Moonlight Boy is not at all working in concert with the God Hand's plans. The Moonlight Boy only wants its mother's love and warmth and will do anything and go anywhere in order to get it. This bit of purity that taints Griffith's current existence could cause his kinsman to declare him impotent once he has played his role in the grand game of fate, and maybe that's how Griffith gets taken out of the story, because Guts couldn't do jack to him even with Dragon Slayer in hand.
Whatever might be the case, the assumption that Griffith is the one leading the God Hand on is incorrect, because we've been explicitly told by the series creator that the figurehead is actually Void. And considering Void allegedly sacrificed an entire city to be reincarnated as the first demon king of the God Hand, who knows what lengths he's willing to go to when one of his own decides to go into business for themselves. If a betrayal is to take place within the ranks of the God Hand, Griffith will not be the one to pull it off. Every story element seems to suggest it will be the opposite, and the only way we can find out if any of this will even happen in the first place is to wait patiently for the next chapter to drop. Marvelous Verdict But as for this video, that's gonna have to be it. Griffith is a slimeball who tried to strangle his best friend and violate his second-in-command just for saving him from a torture cell. But hey, whoever said great was a superlative of good. As a villainous character who has been set up as the absolute being akin to the author of his own story, Griffith is yet to face any kind of major comeuppance for his actions since chapter 54 onwards. What better way to have him experience what he put Guts, Casca, and the rest of the OG Band of the Falcon through than to have him be betrayed by the new kinsmen he traded his old ones for? But what do you guys think? Will the God Hand actually betray Griffith as we reach the climax of Berserk? Or will the bang opposite happen by some miracle of the idea of evil? Let us know in the comments section down below, and we'll see you guys in the next video.